Hello friends and welcome to this tutorial on matrices. In Python, all matrix operations are done using arrays. We, are, we have already seen in previous session that how arrays are better suited for certain mathematical operations. In this session, we shall see how to perform efficient matrix operations using arrays. We shall see how to create them, how to initialize them, how to manipulate and use them to perform some basic image processing as well. For this tutorial, we shall see we shall need the lena.png image. We hope that the image is with you. Let's now start off. As you can see, our lena image is on the desktop. So first, let's navigate to the desktop by cd space desktop. Let's now fire up ipython, ipython space hyphen pylab. First things first. Let's start by creating a normal array. Type a equal to array. 5 comma 8 comma 10 comma 13 let us now check the value of a by typing a and hit enter here a is a single dimensional array that is it has just one row let's now look at creating multi-dimensional arrays by c equal to array 11 comma 12 comma 13 comma 21 comma 22 comma 23 comma 31 comma 32 comma 33 both C and A are arrays but with different dimensions or shape we can check the shape of arrays by using the shape attribute of arrays A dot shape and C dot shape <coughs> As you can see, A is a one-dimensional array of four elements and C, has, C is a 3 cross 3 array. A few other handy array initialization methods are also available to make life easier. Say we want to create an array of size 3 cross 4 with all the elements initialized to 1. We use B equal to 1's within brackets within second pair of brackets 3 comma 4 and b is an, a 3 cross 4 matrix of all ones similarly suppose we already have an array and we want to create another array with the same shape but with initial values equal to 1 example to get an array similar in shape to the to the array c but with all elements as 1 we type d equal to ones underscore like within brackets c D is a 3 cross 3 array with all values equal to 1. Similarly, there are functions like zeros and zeros like which initialize arrays with all values being 0. One more useful function that is available is identity. It creates an identity matrix of given order i equal to identity of 3. As you can see, i is an identity matrix with all the principal diagonal elements being 1 and the rest of the elements being 0. Note that identity takes just one argument since identity matrix is always a square matrix. Now that we have covered the creation of arrays, we shall see how to access and change the values of particular elements. Remember the 3 cross 3 matrix created earlier, C. To access the element 23 in C, we type C of 1 of 2. It is at the second row of the third column of the C matrix. Note that the index value of arrays also start from 0. Alternatively, the more popular way of doing the same is C of 1, 2. Here, comma is used as a separator for row and column values. Similarly, any value from the ma matrix can be accessed. To access particular row completely, we simply skip the column value C of 1 gives the entire second row. We can assign a new value to an element the same way we accessed it. C of 1 comma 1 equal to minus 22. Let's now check by typing C and hit enter. As you can see the middle element has become minus 22. In order to change an entire row we type c of 1 equal to 0. Type c 
and you can see that the entire second row is now zero. Accessing a row is straightforward. We skip the column part. But the same cannot be done to access columns. In order to access columns, we have to use colon. C of colon comma 2 returns this third column. Here colon part mentioned for the row values symbolizes the entire row. The C of 1 we were using earlier can also be written as C of 1 comma colon. Colon actually takes two values. For any row or column we can mention start and end values and row or columns starting from start till end will be returned. Let's try some examples for better understanding. C of 0 colon 2 comma colon returns the row starting from row 0 up to second row and all columns. Note here that end in this case 2 will not be included in the resulting array. C of 1 colon 3 comma colon gives the second and third row. Similarly, we can try this on columns elsewhere. C colon 0 colon 2 gives us the first two columns. This whole concept of accessing chunks of arrays is known as slicing. There is one more interesting and handy feature of slicing. We saw earlier that how colon only means entire row or column. It actually means if we don't specify the start and end part of slice, default is from zero to end. So C of colon comma colon two gives us the first two columns and all rows. Similarly, C of colon comma one colon returns all columns excluding the zeroth column and all rows. C of one colon comma colon two returns the first two columns of all rows excepting the zeroth row. Now we shall look into one more powerful feature of arrays, striding. Striding allows us to jump or skip rows by certain interval. We can specify the step size. C colon comma colon gives us the entire array. We can add one more colon to the row or column part to specify a step size. C colon comma colon colon 2 gives us the first and third column. Since step size is 2, it starts from the 0th column and then we jump one column up to the second column. Similarly, C colon colon 2 comma colon returns a 2 cross the array with the first and the third row. And C of colon colon 2 comma colon colon 2 gives us a 2 cross 2 array with the first and the third row and column. Let us try to use these concepts of slicing and striding to do some basic image processing. PyLab has a function named imread to read images. We shall use the famous Lena image for our experimentation. It's there on our desktop. A equal to imread within quotes lena.png. A is a numpy array with the RGB values of each pixel. A dot shape is shows that it's a 512 cross 512 cross 3 array. To view the image, type im show of A. Let's try to crop the image to get the top left quarter. Since A is a normal array, we can use slicing to get the top left quarter by typing im show of a colon 255 comma colon 255 half of 2512 is 256 Lena's hat is not of much interest for us let us now crop the image so that only our face is visible and to, the, to do that we will need some rough estimates of pixels I am sure of A Now move your mouse pointer over the image. It gives us the x and y coordinates of the mouse pointer's current location. We can get a rough estimate of Lena's face by this. We can observe that Lena's face begins from somewhere around 200 comma 200 and ends at 400 comma 400. Now cropping to these boundaries is simple. 
I am show of a of 200 colon 400 comma 200 colon 400 next we shall try striding on this image we shall resize the image by skipping alternate pixels we have already seen how to skip alternate elements so I am show of a of colon colon 2 comma colon colon 2 Note now the size of the image is just 256 comma 256 and still the quality of image is not much compromised. Till now we have covered initializing and accessing elements of arrays. Now we should concentrate on functions available for arrays. We start this by creating a 4 cross 4 array by typing a equal to array 1 comma 1 comma 2 comma minus 1 comma 2 comma 5 comma minus 1 comma minus 9 comma 2 comma 1 comma minus 1 comma 3 comma 1 comma minus 3 comma 2 comma 7 and hit enter. To get the transpose of this array, we write a dot capital T. The sum function returns the sum of all elements of a matrix, sum of a. Let's create one more array for checking more operations. b equal to array 3 comma 2 comma minus 1 comma 5 2 comma minus 2 comma 4 comma 9 <coughs> minus 1 comma 0 0.5 comma minus 1 comma minus 7 9 comma minus 5 comma 7 comma 3 plus takes care of matrix additions a plus b returns element twice matrix addition let's try multiplication by row a star b returns the element wise product of two matrices to get matrix product of a and b we use dot of a comma b to get the inverse of a matrix we type i and v of a DET of A returns the determinant of the matrix A. We shall create an array E, E equal to array of <coughs> 3 comma 2 comma 4 2 comma 0 comma 2 comma 4 comma 2 comma 3 now let's evaluate the eigenvalues of the given array eig of e it returns both the eigenvalues and the eigenvector of the given matrix to get only the eigenvalues we use eigenvals of e this brings us to the end of this session. We have covered matrices, initialization, slicing, striding, a bit of image processing and functions available for arrays. Thank you.